everybody, it's Elon from Inside Fighting, and you guys are in for a huge treat today. If you like obscure, really cool martial arts, this video is going to be the one that blows you away. Because I've been training with this guy called Guru Darren in a style called Silat for a while. And I've been bugging him to make a video. He agreed finally. We shot it. And he is like an encyclopedia of information. And this video is going to cover so much stuff. It's going to cover Silat on the feet, empty hand, Silat on the ground, all the different kind of weapons that there's super cool weapons of Silat. So stay tuned. Let's get going because this video is honestly one of my favorite ones that I've ever made. Pow, pow. Inside, inside fighting. Yeah. Dangerous, dangerous martial arts. All right, so before we jump in, as you know, the way to support the channel is to go to InsideFightingStore.com. That's InsideFightingStore.com. I have an amazing instructional up there called RAID, Rapid Aggressive Intelligent Defense. It covers a whole series of things for self-defense on the street. It's the first of many to come, and I think it's a fantastic, fantastic instructional. If you don't like it, hit me up. I will refund you. That's how confident I am in it. And it's only 25 bucks, so it's really not a big investment, and honestly, it's fantastic. Let's just jump into the video right now. Gur Darren of Silat, King Dragon Silat. Here we go. What separates Silat from, from a lot of other arts out there is the, obviously what you said, the combative aspect of it. Um, this specific style that I train in was developed for survival. So basically there was people trying to take the Indonesian's land and they had a fight for their survival to keep that land. We uh, draw our aggressors in. So I'm not gonna, my whole thing is I'm not gonna be a long range fighter. Okay. Can you show us kind of what that means and how that looks? Okay, so in, in terms of inviting some, someone in, it's, it's gonna be built on three, okay? It's a lot like our triangle platform, which you can see right here. It has three sides, okay? We need to evade the attacker's punch, kick, whatever he's thrown in. So the first part is I evade to get to his weak side, his open side. So I have two weapons, actually four weapons facing him. Two hands, knee, knee, or kicks. So when he punches in, I evade. The attack can be from an indirect motion right here, angling up. Right, the attack can be off my backhand here. I want to give you guys a closer look of what uh, Guru Darren just did. By the way, did we give a shout out to King Dragon? King Dragon King and King Dragon. Edged <laughs> Tactical Systems. Yes, online. All the information, by the way, for this, if you want to learn more, we're, we're going to put all the information for your YouTube channel on this actual YouTube channel. So in the description, you'll be able to find everything to follow right. Guru Darren. And I really recommend it. Okay, so you just did some cool stuff, some cool entries. Let's run through it a little closer now and uh, just see the motions a little bit. So okay. when I punch. So I'm gonna slow it up a notch because it's hard for the audience to see the actual uh, motions that I'm doing and the impacts that I'm making when I strike. Is Because okay. my whole idea is to weaken this, this guy's arm so I can close in on him and finish him, right? So first thing I'm doing is, right, he's coming in. This is coming here, okay? This head is out of the way. This is here because now I have a control here, right? So he punches in, I'm here. This counters. When I counter with this punch and I come in with my punch, I'm focusing all my energy through into my center knuckle. So I wanna imagine that I have like a lightning bolt shooting out this center knuckle and it's like laser vision and it's gonna be pinpointed to my target. So the target is, is optional, right? If I'm here, I still have a check here. What if he decides to punch in after I counter or before I counter? So now yeah. he throws in that punch. I'm here now, okay? I can blast with my elbow because now I'm close enough, right? Liver shot, okay? Or if worst case scenario, I can just step through. Oh yeah, take him down. Definitely low. going down there. And I'm out of the way here, okay? This opens up a lot, right? I can step behind him now. Yeah, I'm going down. Okay, for the takedown. I was back in this position here. I counter with this punch here, okay? This can turn into that as well. So what we do is we do a lot of multiple strikes off of one punch, okay? That's another thing that sets our particular system apart from most other arts because at the end of the day, C-Lot or Penchok C-Lot, Penchok C-Lot would be like the blanket term and there's thousands of different C-Lot forms, but mm -hmm. not all of them 
are created equal, mm -hmm. right? Not to say my system that I train in is the best out there, but it is very good. And it, we date back all the way to uh, Embakahir, the founder of Chamandi. Chamandi is the oldest, oldest known Indonesian system to first start. He is the founder of Penchak Sila, so Embakahir. Oh, very cool. You know what I love actually, and I wanna show this. Uh, so what I discovered here is that we do the exact same, not the exact same, but very similar drills to Filipino martial arts, like the three count one, this one, we do it in Filipino martial arts, you know what I mean? And you guys have your own little spins on it where you step in and use, yeah, and it becomes alive. Right, exactly. Very, very cool that you guys do that, and it's cool to see the bridge between Indonesian martial arts and, and uh, Filipino martial arts. All right, so I wanna show something very cool. As you guys know, I'm a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I've been doing it most of my life, and I love seeing crossover of movement because a lot of people think Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, grappling styles, Judo, Sambo are kind of unique unto themselves. You wouldn't find these kind of movements in other systems. But you really do. And see, lot, you were doing a drill the other day when we were training, and I was like, man, that is exactly Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So, like the way you use hooks, the intention is different, but the movements, the body mechanics are the same. I'm gonna get out the way, I'm gonna let you demonstrate some of the groundwork, like all these positions and this kind of stuff, which is literally Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. But, yeah. you know, coming from a Silat perspective. Yeah, so 90% of fights are going to end up on the ground. So we got to have some kind of solid mobility when we actually go to the ground. And how do we develop that? We de develop it through uh, uh, fundamental movements on the ground, mm -hmm. right? Stuff that makes sense, okay? okay? So the first thing we start off with is I'm going to just move back and forth like this, okay? So we're here here, here, then I can come to this position. So from here to this, okay? Now we're here to here. So when I come back here, I can close again here. All these openings and closings have a purpose meaning a, a draw. Our whole goal is to draw in our opponent. We want to bait them and then attack them. So for instance, say I'm somehow I end up, he punches in, oh, I lose my balance. See the power guys? Just want to show how forceful my punch was. Yes, that was amazing. <laughs> I'm in pain. My wife is going to kill me tonight. So when he comes in, I'm going to cross, right? Because from here, I have a, a lot of options. I can take out this oh, lower yeah. part of the ankle here mm -hmm. because I'm camouflaging this kick. Now, if he decides to uh, come in to attack me, here's where I'll angle out of the way again. But at the same time, this bottom leg is going to hook, and this is going to open at the same mm -hmm. time. So when I take him down, this can, even if I don't get this grab, which I probably won't, I can still get this takedown oh, here. Oh yeah, it's a mean takedown. Right, so I can hook him here, take this, boom, drive him with the knee, elbow, and at least now I can be mobile. But he's a good jujitsu guy, so <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna stay and give him the opportunity to, to you know, give you the opportunity to, to wreck me. Well, one thing I'm gonna give you kudos on, which a lot of martial artists don't do, and something I've noticed a lot of C-Lat guys are willing to do, is you'll fight me at my game. You'll let me come in and be like, let's do some jits and see how my C-Lat pans out against it. That's rare, guys. That is rare, and it seems like C-Lat guys, another thing I'm giving you credit for, is that you're willing to go in and see how C-Lat does against other systems. I always say that's super important. Um, and playing a little bit more by my rules than by your rules, which is kind of a huge, yeah. a huge advantage. It's, it, it's humbling because you, when you're trying to play somebody at their own game that's really good at their game, it it's, it's doesn't always end out end in favor for, for the good practitioner. But again, it's, it's isolated to what we're doing. But I love, I mean, even uh, can, if you stand up, can I just show something on yeah. you? So in jiu-jitsu, we do a lot of stuff with like, with like hooks, you know what I mean? Inside hooks here, here, and if we go on the other side here, I'll put this one forward. So yeah, so if you look, I'm controlling the hooks. I might come over here. I might try and control his arm, whatever it is, right? To try trip. But if you look and see light, you guys have these exact positions. You guys were literally doing this drill where right. you were using your hooks, coming over, and then rotating around to try and go to the back. Yeah. All these kind of cool movements. And I was like, man, see, that really will help my jujitsu. The, the movements 100%. are very similar. So I, 
Here, stand, stand up. up. I'll show you. Yes, sir. So when I'm down on the ground, obviously this is another position where I'm like inviting. I want to invite you in, uh -huh. but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you the drill that we can work. Okay. Okay. So here's where I hook down low, but these, I'm not going to just place my foot there. This is attacking the lower part of the ankle. Okay. When I come to move, I can groin shot here. I can take this leg out here. I can take them down here. But when I move, now this leg hooks. So when I was in this position here, right, I have kicks, I have devastating shin kicks right here, just destroying yeah. that lower half of the leg, right? These can also be coming in this way to take his balance out there. So when I move, or it can be up high to the groin, <laughs> bladder. So now, again, I have kicks here, here, here to the groin, right? And then I move, I'm here, okay? I could take him out this way. I can switch legs and take them out that way or take them back down that way. So when I'm here, Ooh. I move, I move this. And at the same time, look at my covering. I cover. Yeah, I can't land exactly. anything here. So if I need to switch up, oh, yeah. right, I can kick out of this position, right? And again, this is just a drill, but what yep. people don't feel, what people don't realize is the impact that those little shots have. It's surprising how much... I could see people get kicked in the leg all day. I'm like, eh, you know, it's not as bad. But when you do it, man, when you hit me, especially when the shins connect with my shin and I'm, I have conditioned shins, I'm like, oh man, it is tough. Um, I'd love to show a little bit of the conditioning practices. I think people are gonna yeah. love that. So let's get into that a little bit. Okay, so in Florida, we're lucky enough to have palm trees, okay? So there's many, I, uh, many options for conditioning. You can take the bamboo sticks, Right, I'm sure everybody knows this. I'm sure this is nothing new to people where you're just gonna start rolling and grating and just. He's doing that hard, pushing, guys. Right? I don't know if you heard that. I could literally hear your shin grinding again. Yeah, so that's one option, right? Or that you just work on hitting your legs. Woo just work up and down the shin. That calcifies everything. So I'm gonna give away my secret. I've seen this, guys. It's pretty. Uh... It's pretty bad. <laughs> There's a couple of ways that we, we do this. I like to get down low on the ground. It's a, it's a mature coconut. Um, when I was in Indonesia, we would actually take coconuts. And train, when I was training with my Chamandi teacher, we would train on smashing these coconuts until they broke. Oh, man. Split in half. So what you're doing is your hand's coming up high, and you're striking down like this. So when I come high, <laughs> whoo! And that's how you develop strong arms, right? Forearms where you're bone crushing. Because again, that is our goal in Chamandi is to, when a punch comes in, you're crushing. Yeah, so I want to say this. So again, I, I consider myself a pretty conditioned person. This made me rethink what conditioning is because when we did those arm drills and I did them with you and the next day my arm was swollen and purple, yeah. I was like, oh man, I'm not enjoying this at all. It was like weird parts of my arm. And I realized, I was like, it almost is such a compensator even for skill. If you're that, if you just focus on conditioning, if you could just smash coconuts like this, and then you hit somebody with it, even if they block, because you've hit my arm with it, mm -hmm. it's an effective weapon. It's almost like you don't need technique. You just got to be strong. Like, if I just put my arm out here and give me a little crack. Oh, snap. Yeah, and that's then, crazy. And then think about it. When I'm... Yeah, I can go to the top part, but we, all, we also have a lot of nerves and stuff and muscle and tissue, and that's what we're, that's what we're focused on. I'm not just throwing these strikes out there for, for shits and giggles. I'm making sure what I'm going after is a precise, precision target. So if, he's, if, if I'm down low, right, he punches in, this is, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm smashing that arm. Bro. Right here, right? Aye, aye, aye. And also, think about it on the inside, right? Boom, inside of the arm, smashing the bicep against the bone to split that muscle in there. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I feel it. Yeah. I hope you don't split my muscle. But no, no, bro, I like you, dude. I'm a lover, not a fighter. I just uh -huh. Every C-Lad guy says I'm a lover, not a fighter, until you get him a little bit pissed off. Listen, I, I do this to protect my family and to be safe on the streets. So that's it. Um, I would love if you're willing. Let me show you the shins. Sure. Okay, right? absolutely. So remember. This is the secret, coconut training, okay? So we had the forearms, right? We also had the elbows, where you're working the back side of the elbow, okay? 
Then you also have the shins. The shins, I like to just display my shin out like such. And when I'm striking it against the shin, I'm using two hands and I'm... What? Okay. I Driving got, it in the shin. I gotta just feel this. I'm gonna do it slow at first. Oh, that hurts. Oh, that's not good. It's beautiful <laughs> though. Oh, that is crazy. This yeah. is a great training tool. Hell yeah, it is. And it's free. All right, coming to the part that I was most excited to share with you guys is weapons of Silat. There are such unique, cool looking weapons that you just don't find in other styles. And your movement with them is incredible. So I think it would be really awesome to give people a little demo of each. You could kind of beat me up with a karambit at the end if you want. And these are live blades right now, so I'm gonna get out the way so I don't lose my arm. <laughs> <laughs> so real quick, this is a uh, Javanese uh, Chris. Uh, these were, these are primarily a, it's a thrusting weapon. This is not a slashing weapon. They were tipped with poison. So when they would actually thrust in on somebody, they would thrust and turn with that weapon coming out so they can tear the inside of where they thrust to make it virtually impossible to sew up. Plus putting in poison at the same time. So this is again, uh, the hiding this ranka or the sheath is meant for parrying something out of the way, a limb, counter thrusting, maybe up high, going down low, high, okay? So this weapon here, this is a traditional weapon. It's made out of uh, meteorite, nickel, and metal. And it's forged together by what we call an empu, and he puts his spiritual intent behind these weapons. These are ancient pusakas passed down from generation to generation in families. Next one we'll go over is the Kujong. This is a Sumatran weapon as well. You can see the curvature on here is a lot like a Karambit, which gives you the ability to hook, slash at the same time, hook and redirect, okay? Um, that's the same thing with the karambit. You have your hooking side and your slashing side of the karambit. So you can see the shape is very, very similar. Equally as deadly. Again, this wouldn't be a traditional weapon and this is not something I'm gonna be walking around on the streets carrying. Um, there's a lot of history behind these. I'm not gonna go into it for the sake of time. If you're interested in the history, you're more than welcome to hit me up on Edge Tactical Systems and I can get, give you as much as you want. Okay, so. The karambit. The Filipinos have their style of karambit. The Indonesians have their style of karambit. One of my current teachers now uh, teaches me the Eastern Javanese karambit. So the East Java, West Java, they all have their own karambit systems, which were passed down through generation to generation to generation. Okay? So the way we move with this karambit, you have two sides. You have the hooking side and the slashing side, okay? So I can hook where something's coming in high, I can catch it here, right? And encounter with these slashes, these deadly hooking slashes. What this thing's meant to do is tear through slash, tear through muscle, ligaments, nerves, and tendons. So this thing is probably one of the deadliest EDCs you can find. Okay, so when I'm moving with this, again, um, and I wanted to explain the difference between the Filipinos and the Indonesians, the Filipinos are secretive with this karambit, meaning that everything is hidden. You can't see where it's coming from, okay? And it's hiked up in my hand, so it hides in my hand. So when I actually come out, it's just like a tiger claw. I come out like such. Then I retract it so I can move around, strike in here. Ooh. All right, so basic movements. Then we have the clerk. Some might know it as a sickle. Many different cultures have similar looking weapons um, for use for hacking lemongrass out of the way. And where do you think they come with these 
these angles. It's from cutting grass, right? Just sweeping it out of the way, right? And there's, a, there's your cutting movement right here. Okay, these come in different shapes and sizes. So this weapon here is used for a lot of the same purposes. So say for instance, I have an attack coming towards me this way. I'm gonna get out of the way, get his arm, okay? From here, I'll come in with this snapping motion and going straight to the neck, pulling him back and finishing him. I have a, maybe he's coming with a cut down like this. Okay, I'm in this position here. First thing I do is I get it out of the way, right? I'm coming here and I attack here, okay? This right away comes up to either the neck or just goes right into the body here and pulls back. This hooks to the neck. Oh, yeah. So when I come back, I can step back here. Oh, yeah. Pulling back, taking the head. The beauty of this weapon is I can assist each strike to make it more devastating. When I'm going to the body, it's just here, ripping out. Oh, yeah. Right to the back of the neck and then yoking them down to the ground. So one of the coolest things that I came across in the weapons of Silat was this concept of washing the body. And you had described it as if your, your sword becomes your armor and it's like it has thorns on it when the blade is touching you and you're just literally wrapping your body. It's something I hadn't seen in Filipino martial arts and I thought it was really beautiful. So you're about to give us a really cool demo with a live blade. Then you're gonna whoop my butt a little bit with a wooden blade to show kind of how it's applied. Cause it really shows how Silat is truly a close quarter combat system. So this movement is meant to obviously draw in from an outside, but also when we get in close on somebody, now I can give, do these nasty in close cuts on my opponent. Something comes in here, right? I can stop it here. All right, so, so say he, you come with maybe a, a cut like such, right? If here, I, you know, obviously he comes in with that cut. Essentially, I want to get out of the way of that cut. And then when maybe he comes back in, now I can stop this blade here or the, not the sword here. But when I get in close, now I can start to... Yeah, wash my own body. With wash his own body. Right, so maybe he throws another angle in. Yeah, it cuts off my ability to do anything because you take away all my movement. Yep. Right, so, so really what this is teaching you is to protect yourself all the way. So, or in every um, 360 pretty much so. So say uh, he comes with that again, I have this to stop it. Let's just go around the other if side I'm so people close, can see what you're actually doing there. If I'm in close range, and I need to be able to stop that angle from that side, that gives me the ability to protect myself. And again, yeah, people are, may, may say you're crazy because now you're in the way of this weapon. Yeah, I am in the way of this weapon, but I'd rather be up close and personal with my opponent that at a distance, with a, especially with a trained sword guy, yeah. I'm, I'm screwed, man. So yeah, maybe I can start attacking his limbs from the outside. Yeah, now it's a, it's a fair fight here where I'm exactly. comfortable. 100%, but if I can get in close and, attack his, his uh, weapon hand, right? Now I can gain control mm -hmm. and just literally start yeah, cutting. cutting me everywhere. And at least have it here. Even if he tries pulling that arm back, he's gonna pull back and cut. Yeah, maybe I get cut, but let's face the facts. We're getting cut, no yeah, matter what. You're cutting off my arm and my neck. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's really interesting, because I, I never felt comfortable like being this close to someone, the way you do it, it's like you're you're literally just hugging the person and hitting them in, in places exactly. where you wouldn't imagine it. So it's just very, 
There's a cool shift for the way I see weapons fighting up close. Yeah, man, especially think about it too. When you're, I'm not gonna just stand in front of the guy. Remember, we're using C-Lot footwork, right? We have to be able to move out of the way. So he comes in, this might be stopping it here. And I'm here. Yeah, man, if someone just came at me with a sword like this, it would suck. I would not be happy. Right, so, I mean, there's, Many ways to do it. I'm not going to just stand you straight up and do it. I'm going, yeah. to move, I'm, going to not, I'm going to move around your body utilizing the appropriate footwork and make you turn and control the fight. That's know? a whole video in itself is C-Lock yeah. footwork, but we'll do that another day. I hope you guys love this. I hope you definitely follow Guru Darren. And also, he's coming out with some cool content. He's going to have some instructionals coming out, so I'm really excited for that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Anything yeah. you want to say? Yeah, you can, uh, like I said earlier, or um, Elon said earlier, you can visit me on um, Edge Tactical Systems. That's uh, my YouTube channel. You can contact me through there. Um, I'm open. Hit me with whatever questions you have. And that's it. Stay safe. Train hard.